Matilda Fernandez, and welcome to BiblioBe to look at the interesting services, programs, and exhibitions offered at your Miami-Dade Public Libraries. A library isn't just the perfect place to get historical information of any kind. One branch of the Miami-Dade Public Library system is also part of local history. Since the late 1800s, the Coconut Grove Branch Library has been providing residents in this area with valuable library service. It was because people came here who were cultivated people and uh, who appreciated the wildness and the nature. And uh, it's sort of an accident of fate that Kirk Monroe, who wrote boy stories for Harper Magazine, should be out on the bay. It was a turn of the century in Coconut Grove, the sleepy southern neighbor of Boomtown and not yet a city Miami, was already a port of call for winter visitors. Well, it turned out that Andrew Carnegie's wife was here. She was yachting, and she came in one day, and she found Mary Barr Monroe, the wife of Kirk Monroe, whose mother had been a novelist, reading to a group of girls called the Pine Needles Club. And uh, I suppose pine needles because they were under the trees, and the pine needles were falling. So the first books in the collection came from Mrs. Andrew Carnegie. That was January 1895. With a constant flow of donations from winter residents, the collection for what was to become the Coconut Grove Library Association grew and was moved to the top floor of Peacock's General Store. But space soon ran out at the $5 a month location, and without a deal for a better spot, Kirk Monroe sought out a friend who shared more than a last name in common, Pioneer Commodore Ralph Monroe also shared a love of books. He went to Ralph Monroe and said, would you uh, give us a piece of land? He gave this piece of land. But it was Kirk himself who, with a couple of boys, dug the first earth. And it was he also who uh, put the first stone. By 1901, the Coconut Grove Library had a new building, a growing number of customers, and an interesting neighbor. For almost a century, the Coconut Grove Library has shared its land and history with Eva Amelia Monroe, the wife of the man who donated the library's land. Monroe had the grave move there in 1896 after learning that Henry Flagler planned to build a resort on the Miami River near the grave's original site. Every once in a while, I forget that someone's buried there, but I do go over there once in a while to see who, who it was, and it's, uh, Monroe's uh, daughter or, or a relative, some, some relative or something, yeah. Most people pass it by and very few notice it because it's pretty subtly done. There's no gate to the graveyard. It's, it's a complete fence. So to get in, you have to use a, a fence, which protects Ava Amelia from intruders. Protected from the elements, the original Coconut Grove Library that had served local residents without air conditioning, telephone, or soundproofing for 60 years had to be raised and was completely rebuilt in 1963, earning architect T. Tripp Russell a National Library Building Award. The new library managed to retain much of the charm of the old building by including the front porch and entrance in its design. The quaintness of the original library remains, although something is definitely different now. Author and historian Helen Muir remembers her first visit to the Coconut Grove Library in the late 30s. We came to Coconut Grove and I walked in here on the uh, fall. And there was a chirpy little lady sitting behind the desk. And so I got the books I wanted and she was uh, very friendly. And as I was checking out, she said, that will cost you $2. And I said, what do you mean $2? <laughs> The $2 service charge remained until 1957 when the Coconut Grove Library Association gave the land to the city of Miami and service was then provided free of charge. In 1971, the Coconut Grove branch joined the Miami-Dade Public Library System. Well, I'm living here 46 years, living in the same house. I used to come here. It was very quaint. It's great. Really different than a lot of libraries. The layout is nice. The people are nice there. And I come in here uh, about three times a week and get books out. Coconut Grove's increasing popularity has meant this historic branch library is very busy lately. From a few hundred donated books, this branch now boasts a collection of more than 31,000 items. 
Last year, we had between 75 and 80,000 volumes checked out. So yes, we have our moments that were very hectic, especially when we have classes in, and we can circulate 60 children within a matter of minutes. Like most branches of its size, the Coconut Grove Branch Library offers patrons a wide selection of materials on numerous subjects, as well as videotapes, audio cassettes, and books on tape. But it's not surprising that this unique library does some things a little differently. For example, cliff notes and magazines are available for checkout here. It's to encourage use, and it's very friendly for the patrons not to have to always photocopy the materials, then they can just go to the collection, page through, and, and take what they want with them. What is that? It's an E. Can you say E? E. The children's room here not only includes an exciting collection of books and games, but is one of only a few libraries in the system with an Apple computer. Computer and programs many kids are now using in their schools. And there's also a one-of-a-kind collection tailored to the needs of Grove residents. We have a Sea Life collection because a lot of our patrons are either at the anchorage, which means they're stationed in the bay, they, they're living on boats, or they're moored at the marina. And they come in for boat repair manuals and buying a new sailboat. We have uh, three yacht clubs, sailing clubs, and um, they want racing information. The books range 100 years because some of the volumes are standards in the subject. And you can't, really can't get a newer edition that's better than what we already have. And the Coconut Grove Branch Library has also become a standard. It was the first library with a friends group, volunteers who helped the branch library through fundraising efforts such as book sales. It's the oldest friends that I know of except the University of Pittsburgh. I mean, there were no friends of everything, no friends of anything. Marjorie said, you know, at the University of Pittsburgh, they have a friends organization, and we should call ourselves the Friends of the Coconut Grove Library. The Little Grave by the Library by Beth Lipscomb. The encroaching town is held at bay from the little grave by the iron fence. That cannot... It is the only library with a neighbor that inspires poetry and a colorful history that has marked the dedication of pioneers whose vision began providing residents with a valuable service almost a century ago and probably will for another hundred years. If you didn't stay in one place, you'd never absorb that full appreciation for the fact that it takes generations to do, you know, you know, family knows what it takes to raise a child. Well, to run a library for a long time takes a little doing, too. Stop by the Coconut Grove Branch Library and discover this important piece of local history. And while you're there, check out a book or two. We'll be right back with more of Biblio Beats.